Hey music fans, um, I've been watching some cool videos uh, on favorite records, people pulling out some cool vinyls, showing off their top favorites and stuff like that. There's a lot of cool ones about the 80s, and I figured uh, I would go ahead and make my own, uh, especially because there's not a lot of love for cheesy 80s music. And while I have a pretty decent sized vinyl collection and I have a lot of jazz, um, you know, I have a lot of stuff from the 60s and 70s, Stones, Bob Dylan, Doors, you know, stuff that you might consider good music. Uh, I thought it would be fun to just uh, kind of show off my guilty pleasure, which is uh, not so guilty, actually. Uh, or as Journey said, pleasure should never be guilty. And uh, just show off some of my really cheesy 80s pop stuff, which I just love. Um, I, I enjoy it a lot. Um, even if I can't always defend the merits of the musicality. And uh, I thought I'd share that with you because the cool thing about 80s pop records that are really cheesy is they're not very expensive. Um, major collectors don't want them, music audiophiles are not you know, seeking them out necessarily. And so you can get a lot of these records for a buck and just have a good time. You know, really cheese it up and uh, yeah. so. Without further ado, there's going to be some records that are, you know, legitimately just really solid 80s classics in here, but there's also a lot of cheese. There's a bit of a mix. So let's start it off with uh, my newest uh, favorite cheese album, and that is Aretha Franklin's Who's Zoomin' Who. Uh, this album is ridiculous, and I am so a fan of it now. I just scored this at a garage sale for a couple bucks. And it's really, uh, really quite a fun, uh, a fun album. Uh, the the main title track, "Who Zoom and Who," of course, was a was a pretty significant, or I don't know, medium hit, uh, radio hit. And uh, there was another radio hit on here, which I forgot which song that was. But there's actually it's an interesting evolution of Aretha Franklin's style, especially coming off of the Blues Brothers in 1980. Uh, this is 1985. And she has a couple of tracks in here, like Sweet Bitter Love, I think, is one that are, you know, kind of standard, uh, not super synth pop style songs, and just kind of, you know, pretty good on their own merits kind of stuff. But what's really fun is, is the pop stuff. And uh, Who's Zoom and Who definitely is a, is a highlight on here. Um, I think Freeway of Love is another fun one. And um, there is a duet with... The Eurythmics, which is great. Uh, sisters are doing it for themselves. It's kind of a cool uh, second wave feminist track, which is really fun uh, about women coming out of the kitchen and doing it for themselves. Uh, and so that's really that's really a lot of fun. And you can't go wrong with this ridiculous cheesy '80s cover. And that's the first one, Aretha Franklin's '80s pop album. Who knew? Uh, next on this list, of course, it's going to be Billy Idol. Uh, Billy Idol is, no, not my idol, but he's really fun, uh, real cheesy, um, 80s rock stuff. Some people might, you know, think it's regular rock, but I, I don't think so. It's pop rock. Um, this has, of course, uh, Rebel Yell, which is really good. Uh, a really uh, great Billy Idol song a lot of people don't know about. Um, I think it is on his greatest hits, but Eyes Without a Face. Eyes Without a Face is a great track. Uh, I guess this album doesn't actually have White Wedding, which is probably uh, one of his most famous songs, but um, it does have Eyes Without a Face, and that is a reason to get this. I also just love the cover. Uh, he's trying to look really cool. He's obviously, um, you know, I don't know. It's just, it's it's funny. It's ridiculous. So that's, uh, that's another, you know, dollar fine. I'm going to hit you with a really uh, questionable one here. Um... And that was one I got recently that I probably shouldn't have bought, but I did. And that's Rod Stewart. Rod Stewart! Um, Rod Stewart is not uh, a great musician, in my opinion. Uh, there's not a lot I can say that's going to... I can't really defend his music. His compositions are questionable. The uh, layout of the... You know, from one track to another, <laughs> you're going you're gonna to lose some steam on this album. But it does have the one 80s pop hit uh, one that I like of his, or I guess there's two actually. But the one on here, probably his best song that I know of, is uh, Young Turks. Young Turks is, I think, a great song actually. Um, 
it, it actually has some pretty deep lyrics if you listen to the lyrics and um, yeah it's it's quite an interesting song uh, I would I, I recommend it the production is actually quite nice in that song uh, interestingly enough on the back here it says produced by Rod Stewart I did not know that Rod Stewart was a producer but there you go so that was three bucks for a single essentially probably should have found a 45 for that one but you live and learn uh, the one other Rod Stewart song I will, I will mention that I, I like that's a really cheesy 80s pop song is Some Guys Have All the Luck. Uh, some guys have all the luck. Some guys get all the breaks. Some guys something something. Anyway, it's a cheesy fun song. And I recommend it if you like cheesy 80s pop. Uh, further down the list, this album is fantastic. Uh, Control by Janet Jackson. Uh, a lot of her albums I find are like decent, you know, they'll have like one or two radio hits. This album is her most solid, I think. Um, it's fantastic. Uh, I, strangely enough, Control itself, the song Control, I don't like very much. But of course, Nasty's on here. Nasty, nasty boys don't mean a thing, you know. And uh, What Have You Done For Me Lately? It's a classic. What have you done for me lately? Um, I apologize, I'm murdering these songs. Um, when I Think of You is on here, that is a fantastic song, great music video. After this one, you should just look that up and watch it. And uh, of course, Let's Wait a While. Let's Wait a While, fantastic 80s classic on here. Uh, my one big critique of this is that uh, Let's Wait a While should have been the final song on the album. It should be on the B side, it should be the last track. It's a beautiful way to end the album but instead they added something called Funny How Time Flies After It. And it kind of kind of kills the mood a little bit if you're just trying to mellow out. And I'm, I'm a stickler for the composition of an album as a whole, the arrangement of the tracks. And that one, they dropped the ball a little bit. But it's a great album. I, I highly recommend it. Uh, next up, of course, we have to talk about the wonderful Phil Collins. Phil Collins! Um, I have all his major 80s records because I'm crazy like that, and I recently got my last one for the collection, which is Face Value. Uh, this might actually be Phil Collins' best album. This album completely rules. Uh, it has In the Air Tonight. I like, too, that it's like the back of his head. It's kind of a funny cover, but it's... I actually really like the cover. It's got this kind of intensity that he's known for. Um, yeah, this, this album I'm still digging into. I just got it like a week and a half ago. Um, but I'm absolutely loving it. Um, this Must Be Love and In the Air Tonight are fantastic. There's a bunch of other really good tracks on here. And this is 1980, so it's kind of like the beginning of the synth stuff. And he's really just knocking it out of the park. Um, from what I understood, he made this album uh, after breaking up with his band and going through a really terrible divorce, which is what In the Air Tonight is about. So it's kind of a... Uh, yeah, but it's not heavy, as, as heavy as you would think it is. But it is his heaviest album, I would say. Uh, it's still quite good. Um, continuing on the Phil Collins, this album cover I hate. It's terrible. It's like, it's like trying to be, I don't know, some erotic novel or something. Ugh, what a terrible cover. But you gotta get it because it has Against All Odds. And that's, of course, a Phil Collins classic. Take a look at me now. There's just an empty space. Yeah, super uh, dramatic emo stuff. But it's a good song. Um, Stevie Nicks is on here, too, with Violet and Blue. Um, kind of feels like she's just calling that one in. I don't know about the other tracks on this. haven't listened to it a lot because I just got it for Phil. Uh, of course, uh, Genesis. Um, I guess this was uh, 86. Okay, he's still doing stuff with Genesis, apparently, after his solo album. And, uh, of course, this has... Invisible Touch. She seems to have an invisible touch, yeah. Um, and uh, In Too Deep, of course, is good. I think Land of Confusion is alright, too. Um, you know I love you, but I just can't take this. You know I love you, but I'm playing for keeps. Wow, is my voice uh, not uh, warmed up today. So yeah, maybe I'll stop singing. Maybe I'll keep singing. Who will know? Uh, here is another classic Phil Collins album, No Jacket Required. This is actually, uh, I think, his best-selling album of the 80s. 
And uh, it's got Susudio, which is like a totally poppy, dancey, fun, cheesy song. Ultra cheesy. That's probably as cheesy as. Uh, and then it's got uh, One More Night, which is good. One more night. Give me just one more night. What's cool about Phil Collins' albums is you're not going to be disappointed with the other tracks. They all play really well together. Um, the arrangement on the album is, is very nice as a whole. And he puts every ounce of his artistic ability into each album. Now, he's not the greatest artist in the world, so he's not going to like create, you know, uh, Strange Days every time or whatever. But he's, uh, he, is a fanta he is fantastic, though. He is very great at what he does. And he's... He's just a hell of a producer. I don't know if, if he does if he has all the production credits or if he's working with another producer, but I, I think it's he's got to have a major input to it because the production on these albums is stellar and it's uh, on a whole it continues uh, from album to album. It's just high caliber quality stuff. And then finally in '89, uh, this album took me a while to track down. Surprisingly, uh, at least in the cheap dollar bins or whatever. I think I might have paid a few bucks for it. Uh, this is called "But Seriously." Um, I have the uh, saran wrap, so there's a sticker over his eyeball. But I don't want to take off the saran wrap because I'm weird. Anyway, this album is... Uh, what can I say about this album? This is great. I mean, this is terrific. This this is a strong contender for my favorite Phil Collins album because it's... it's uh, it's 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 got that smooth, that really kind of smooth, almost almost over polished '80s sound that you get at, by the end of the '80s, where people are almost getting, it's almost too much, right? Um, but it's not there yet. And this, the track on here, the the opening track, "Another Day in Paradise," uh, I remember hearing this song when I was uh, 16 or 17. Uh, and it was huge for me, because it's a song about poverty and homelessness in America, uh, especially in response to the Reagan era and the displacement of people. And it's about how every day for you and me, for people that are not homeless, is another day in paradise. Um, it's, it's a, he takes the concept and really runs with it um, in a very... Adds a, doesn't add a ton of lyrical depth, but adds tons and tons of emotional depth, which is what Phil Collins is best at. And what's wonderful is he really put a ton of work into that track to really make it a highly produced, a well-produced, I should say, number. And it climbed to the top of the charts. It was the number one track of 1989. Um, and so, you know, I'm sure that helped people and changed people's lives. Uh, what's great on here is that he actually, this whole album is uh, essentially like a smooth 80s protest songs in a way. There's a lot of uh, socially conscious tracks on here where he's, you know, he's upset with what he's seen in the 80s from Reagan and uh, not seeing the changes that I'm sure he hoped to see from the 60s and 70s movements. And he's really putting that in this album and saying, yeah, yeah, I'm rich, I'm famous, but that doesn't mean the world's okay. And Phil, love you for it. So those are all my Phil Collins albums. Moving on to another artist that I've had to collect pretty much every 80s album for who is criminally underrated. Uh, and that is, of course... Pat Benatar. Pat Benatar, uh, I actually was working on a podcast about her. She, gosh, she's fantastic. Uh, her music is fantastic. And as a person, she's just a really uh, legit person, really. I'm reading her memoirs right now, and um, she really worked hard to break down barriers for women in rock and roll and in the music industry on a whole. She doesn't censor herself. She's just very brash and outspoken, uh, total badass, really focused on her life as a mother, um, and did not sacrifice her marriage to her guitarist, Neil Giraldo, um, or her time as a mother to be a famous rock star. And so I really, I really commend her for that, for really being a good person first, and then making gr great music second. And those two don't always go together, especially with my experience in the music industry. Um, so, but that aside, there are some wonderful songs here. Uh, she's also, in my opinion, uh, uh, the must-listen-to artist uh, in the 80s for any survivors of like domestic violence. She is uh, very, has a very raw and powerful voice and the lyrics that she writes really speak to um, surviving like abusive relationships um, and, and just being empowered in, a, in, a, in an incredible way. Uh, I really think she's a survivor and a total badass and um, yeah, this is her most uh, famous album. It sold the most copies as far as I know. 
um, because it's got Promises in the Dark, fantastic number that opens the track, um, incredible guitar playing in that one. Fire and Ice, of course, is another radio classic on here. Um, and uh, those are the, definitely the two. Oh, it's got Precious Time. Precious Time is fantastic. Uh, so those three songs are incredible. The one downside I will say to every Pat Benatar album I've listened to so far is that they just are inconsistent. You're not going to get the same caliber of quality and um, detail put into the lyrics and compositions with each track the way you do with a Phil Collins album. Phil Collins albums are cheesy, but he puts the work into it in every track. You can really tell. It might not be the best track. It might not land the way he wants it to, but um, he does put the time and effort. With Pat Benatar, and I would say her band, I don't know if it's necessarily her vocal performances, but her band does not necessarily give it their all on every track. So that's something to be aware of. But um, a couple other Pat Benatar albums I will show you. Um, Get Nervous, this was a big deal for her because it was the first cover where she was uh, fighting with the label and finally won to not do some really sexy um, you know, exposing her boobs kind of thing. And that was a big problem for her uh, as the label just wanted to push her as a sex object. And so she really fought hard for this cover, this kind of weird, um, artsy, you know, cover. And um, the label was definitely very upset about it. Uh, she says in her memoirs, I think, that she finally agreed to just put on these, you know, these little black, uh, whatever, spandex, because the label's like, we gotta make you a sexy song right now. But you'll see in later covers, she, she didn't do that because she her contract ended and she was able to do whatever the hell she wanted. And good for her. Um, I will say, artistically speaking, I don't like the direction of this cover and the photos because uh, I think it kind of it kind of mocks... It can, you know, depending on how you take it, I, I, it can kind of mock uh, people that are locked up in, in mental institutions. Um, but maybe that's just me being too sensitive. Um, I also just, I don't know, artistically, it just doesn't, I don't know, it's very, very 80s. I guess it's not bad. Um, but uh, the album itself, I should mention, um, has Shadows of the Night, which is good. Um, Looking for a Stranger, that's a good one. Uh, Anxiety is okay, it's kind of the title track of the album, Get Nervous. A uh, Little Too Late, Little Too Late is another good track, um, but it's very, I would say it's the least good good of her greatest hits. It's like, eh, I don't know. It's very, it's very uh, choppy, kind of choppy poppy, if that makes any sense. And um, yeah, that's kind of it for this one. This is not her worst album, not her best. It's pretty decent, but it's cheesy. It's Pat Benatar. And uh, this album, Tropico, I got this one recently. Uh, this is another uh, 80s, you know, it's pretty solid Pat Benatar album. This was created... Um, after, I don't know if it was after Get Nervous, uh, but you can tell she's finally changing up her like sexy image or whatever, which are from Crimes of Passion and In the Heat of the Night, both of which I have coming in the mail. Don't have those yet, but those are I think those are going to be good albums too. Crimes of Passion sold really well and has a bunch of hits too. Heat of the Night has Heartbreaker, great song. But uh, yeah, this has We Belong and the Ooh Ooh song, which are both hits of hers. Um, and... She had mentioned that We Belong was written after she had her first uh, daughter. Um, and she, uh, this is very much her happiest album. Like it's her album celebrating motherhood, her marriage to Neil Giraldo, and kind of her success. And so uh, it's good for that. It's like a good kind of weird, it's weird because it's kind of uh, the most feel good of Pat Benatar's albums. But um, I think she works better as an artist talking about pain Sadly, it says it. I don't know if that's sad. I think I think she's better at expressing the uh, emotions of struggle for me. So I um, this isn't my favorite because of that, but I can appreciate what she's doing, and I can appreciate that. I think her her song "We Belong" is actually her most played song on YouTube. It's got like 40 million hits or something. Uh, coming up on emo, if we're gonna continue the emo. Oh, before I before I go there, uh, I will just show off my collector's edition. Uh, picture disc of uh, Pat Benatar, and this uh, this disc. I'm so happy I got this. I got a I got it at a really good price, um, and I think it's just really cool. Even if picture discs don't sound as good as uh, you know regular uh, records, 
I think it's a, a really cool thing to have. It's got some live performances, and I almost forgot my favorite Pat Benatar album. I was saving the best for last. Seven the Hard Way. Seven the Hard Way is a fantastic album. This copy is actually sealed. Yay! Got it very cheap. Like I said, cheesy 80s stuff. Nobody wants it. This was eight bucks. Um, brand new. And I think this is her best album. She thinks it's her worst, I think. She thinks it's one of her worst because she was working... Uh, you know, she had this crazy contract where she had to produce an album every nine months. And this was her seventh album in that contract. It was wearing her really thin. And that's why she called it Seven the Hard Way because it was really hard to make it. Um, and she had been a mother on tour uh, when she was making this album too. Uh, but this album is the culmination of all her frustration uh, with the industry, with the label. That's what I think makes it really good. Um, it's got Invincible, which is a strong contender for my favorite track of hers. Invincible is fantastic. And then um, I would say Tide as her very best track, her criminally underrated track, um, is Sex as a Weapon. Sex as a Weapon is fantastic. And the music video is quite possibly the best 80s music video I've ever seen. Yes, I said that. Best 80s music video. I know there's a ton of good ones out there, check out Sex as a Weapon. That video is amazing. Uh, and so that song is really a culmination of her frustration of the sexism with the music industry and um, just pop culture on a whole. And it's a very catchy, kind of fun number. It's a bit of an acquired taste. First time you hear it, it's a little bit cheesy, uh, like, like I'm talking about. But uh, I think it'll grow on you. Great song, great album. Seven the Hard Way, Pat Benatar. Moving on with the emo stuff, we got Tears for Fears. This is a, a known classic. Um, great album. Uh, this album is very uh, atmospheric. It really focuses on the atmosphere of their music, I would say. It's very, um, there's some live performances here that are fantastic. Uh, it's got Head Over Heels. I think it's got Everybody Wants to Rule the World. You know, those classics. Uh, Shout is on here. Um, bunch of great stuff. But I would say the best tracks on here are the ones you haven't heard of, probably. Um, I believe, I think, is really good, and the, uh, the the track that will oftentimes bring me to tears, I tears for fear, uh, is "Listen." Uh, the track "Listen" is a like a really long track that is so intensely powerful. It's not, it's not. It doesn't have a lot of lyrics, but it really just dives in here for me. Amazing track, amazing album. Really happy to have it. Continuing on with the cheese. Men at Work. Uh, Men at Work. You, I used to see these all the time. I think they're getting a little bit less common, but you can probably still find it in the dollar bin. Um, these guys are cheesy, man. Uh, I can't say that they're great artists or anything, but I, I do like some of their tracks. Uh, Who Can It Be Now? Who Can It Be Now? Uh, that's, of course, a great track on, uh, you know, Weird Paranoia. It's kind of in the lines of, like, Somebody's Watching Me. Somebody's Watching Me. And uh, it's got Down Under. I come from a land down under. You know, that's a fun one. And um, I think those might be the only two hits on here. But there's some other, you know, not, not quite in the rank of a Phil Collins album, but there is still a, a good amount of production going into some of the other tracks. Um, I Can See It In Your Eyes is a, is a pretty good number and a, and a few others. So um, don't spend more than a couple bucks on it. It's not going to, like, fill your cheese meter. But it's, it's pretty good. It's a good little dollar store find. Or dollar bin fine. Uh, Spandu Ballet, if I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, this is super cheese, emo, uh, 80s pop stuff. I don't know if this classifies as new wave. Um, yeah, this has some pretty good tracks on it, but of course the... And it's, it's, it's very smooth, you know? It'll, uh, you know, it'll kind of it'll float into it. But of course the song that really uh, is well known for, for them is uh, True. This much is true. Uh, great song, fantastic, definitely worth owning. Um, I had to get it for that song. And the rest of the album is pretty good. It's pretty good, actually. Not amazing, but cheesy. Uh, fill it up the cheese meter. We're going to show off my collection of Huey Lewis in the News. Huey Lewis in the News. Um, these guys are so underrated, in my opinion. So underrated. Uh, they, of course, are kind of campy. Um, they were in Back to the Future, the first one. Uh, Back in Time is a super, super cheese fest. 
Uh, Power of Love, too. Also a super cheese fest, right? Um, but the thing about Huey Lewis and the News is, I think, in my opinion, they're a legitimate band. They're very legitimate, and they are... They're great at what they do, with, and what they what they kind of pioneered, I guess, or kind of the new genre they created or whatever, is kind of a mix between doo-wop. If you like doo-wop and, like, um, four-part harmony kind of stuff from the 50s, but you wish there was more substance to it, and you don't mind adding some synth and some, you know, 80s rock to that sound, uh, then you, you should check out Huey Lewis and the News. It's kind of like, you know, the four tops or something, but with way more depth and way more complexity, way, way better production values, um, way more just emotion. Uh, for example, you know, stuff that people don't know about is he actually, it's almost like Huey Lewis came from a union family or something. You know, he's got these like very like kind of pro-worker, uh, pro-war veteran, you know, um, tracks that, that are not really known. You just kind of think of them as a cheesy band. But like Walking on a Thin Line uh, is a track on this album, Sports, which um, it's, about, it's about coming back from a war as a veteran and, and walking that thin line between sanity and insanity, uh, trying to, you know, just keep, keep it together uh, in a society that's um, not really seeing your needs. And uh, I think it's a very deep track, but it's done in this very 80s pop way. So it kind of it kind of catches you off guard, but also uh, is very digestible because of that. Uh, this also, of course, has Heart of Rock and Roll. That song, eh, I'm not crazy for it, but it's a fun, it's a fun cheesy one. And um, if this is it, if this is it, classic kind of uh, song about relationships from the 80s. I, I do kind of like his take on relationships in the sense that. Uh, I don't know. Who knows what he was like in real life, but at least in the songs, he comes across as a pretty caring guy who's not like a, you know, he's not trying to like objectify women. He's really focusing on the emotional challenges of a relationship, which I think is great. And you don't get enough of that in rock or, or pop, really. Um, this album, another, is actually a really, really solid one as well. Um, this has, uh, Working for a Living is pretty good. It's kind of that, that kind of blue collar stuff I was talking about before. Uh, do you believe in love? Do you believe in love? Do you believe it's true? That's a good uh, cheesy 80s song. And um, Whatever Happened to True Love. Yeah, there's, there's some really, these are cheesy. You got to be in the mood for like harmonizing 80s pop rock cheese. And if you're in the mood for that, look no further. Uh, lastly, their best album, Four. Uh, this is actually not, I don't know, I don't see in the dollar bin so much as I used to. Uh, getting a little bit pricey just because it's, it's a good album. It's kind of their flagship album. Flagship album. Uh, Jacob's Ladder is pretty good. Stuck With You. That's a great, great song. Um, you don't get songs like that on the radio these days. Yes, it's true. Yes, it's true. I'm so happy to be stuck with you. You know, it's a great song just about how, um, you know, just, just about the comfort and joy that comes from a long-term relationship um, in a very, like, healthy, wholesome kind of way. It's really good. Uh, doing it all for my baby. That's, you know, another fun, cheesy one. These are, it's like a great album to celebrate to put on if you have, like, a significant other, you know, partner, boyfriend, girlfriend, uh, it's a great album to just kind of uh, enjoy that, like, things are going good, you know? It's kind of one of those kind of albums. Hip to be a square, hilarious, hilarious uh, social commentary, kind of funny social commentary album. Um, Forest for the Trees and Naturally, uh, and maybe even simple as that, kind of the ending tracks on this album. I would say Forest for the Trees is a strong contender for their best song. Nobody knows it fantastic song and uh, yeah there's a song I think it's uh, naturally um, has some more like blue collar references you know trying to make it in America uh, trying to make it you know um, working nine to five kind of stuff so yeah very cool kind of kind of blue collar union -y, um, you know I, it's like very American in this way that you don't hear a lot in like a say a Bruce Springsteen or something but when I think of Hugh Lewis in the news, I think very much of like a white American struggling to, you know, make it, but also you have romance and whatever other things in your life that contribute to your success. And 
Huey Lewis, Huey Lewis in the News, always a fun time, and a surprising bit of depth in their songs as well. Uh, moving on, we have an album I just got recently, uh, Billy Squire. Billy Squire is a fun rocker, man, super cheesy. Um, and this one has Rock Me Tonight. Rock Me Tonight! And he's, uh, he's fun, man. He's uh, just a good time. If you want some cheesy 80s rock, but you don't want to pay a lot for like an ACDC or, um, you know, a Toto or something like that, even though those, those aren't that much money. But, you know, some of the 80s rock's getting expensive. A lot of people don't know about Billy Squire or care. You can't blame them. Um, he's not like the greatest rocker, but he's fun, man. It's fun, cheesy 80s rock. You can't go wrong with some Billy Squire. Totally underrated, awesome 80s cheese. And you can say that the cover says it all. Expose. Expose. Um, they are so fun. They're very influenced, I think, by something like Miami Sound Machine. And um, you can, I mean, just look at this. They're just, they're just having fun in their weird 80s clothes, um, looking ridiculous. Uh, I love how they, they almost look like Twisted Sister on this cover, especially her. Um, Come Go With Me is probably the only one you might know of, or, or Point, of, Point of No Return. Those are the two, two radio hits on there. Um, but this whole album is just really fun. I mean, you put this on in the morning, and you're going to have a good day. Super cheesy, super fun. Highly recommended. Uh, this one's not super cheesy, but it's worth a mention. I, I pulled out all my 80s records, and of course, this is a classic... Uh, Queen. I'm actually wearing my Queen t-shirt. Uh, I do not have enough Queen albums. In fact, this is my only Queen album. Uh, I think they're kind of expensive now. Uh, but Queen, of course, I mean, what can you say about Queen that hasn't been said? Freddie Mercury uh, is one of the all-time greatest rock performers. Um, this album has Bohemian Rhapsody, uh, it's, which is, I think, a fantastic song. And also, it's, even though you've heard it too much by now, I'm sure, it's the kind of song, when you think about it, should not be a hit. It, it's totally nonsensical. It doesn't have good structure in the, in the traditional sense. And it's this really weird song, but it's phenomenal, of course. Um, and, um, yeah, this has... Oh, uh, what is it called? Uh, Laying on a, on a Sunday Afternoon. Classic. That's a really good one. Really, che really cheesy. He's got some kind of uh, interesting... Again, it's almost kind of a Four Seasons or whatever, Four Tops, whatever those bands are, those, those uh, pre-doo-wop, you know, kind of harmonizing. Uh, barbershop, there's the word I'm looking for. Like, barbershop influence. It's not a huge influence, but it's there, and it's kind of fun in some of his stuff. Um, but, of course, the thing about Freddie Mercury is he's layering all his vocals in all sorts of crazy, awesome ways. Um, tons of production, tons of harmonies, intricate harmonies. And um, the thing about Freddie Mercury, too, is, you know, he, all thing people don't really talk about is uh, Queen was around at a time when, you know, the gay liberation struggle was happening for LGBT equality. And so uh, Freddie Mercury's songs have that intensity and that struggle um, combined with that just unbelievable love and, like, for life and, and um, kind of uh, expressiveness that's, you know part of uh, the gay community that's beautiful and powerful and I just Freddie Mercury is a wonderful beautiful man and this this album is fantastic and um, the last thing I will say I don't know if it's on this album um, but um, you're my best friend I don't think it's on this album but you're my best friend I love that song um, Freddie Mercury was married to a woman uh, I think for a while I forgot her name um, but when he came out of the closet uh, they stayed really good friends, and I think it's a wonderful testament uh, to who he is as a person that he created a song.